Shock and confusion, two words that come to mind. Eastwood Richie kept a dark secret. A secret, now a confession, nearly 30 years later, new DNA technology, the only thing leading to her arrest and to finally come clean. This video contains the interrogation of a woman whose DNA linked her to a baby who was abandoned to die. In 1993, the remains of a newborn infant were found in a wooded area of Ohio. It had been left in a garbage bag but wild animals had dragged it closer to the road where it was discovered. It quickly made the local news, and the community came forward with donations to pay for the burial. The baby soon became known as Giaga's child after the county in which he was found. For nearly 26 years, the case remained unsolved, and many had given up hope of ever finding out who was responsible. In 2019, with the rising popularity of DNA testing and online ancestry sites, a break in the case was finally made. After narrowing the search, the detectives were able to identify the mother, Gail Eastwood Ritchie. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good. Look, he's the Arctic County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we just want to see if we can talk to you for a couple of minutes. Mm, no, yeah. Okay. You have any idea what we want to talk to you about? Because I kind of think you might. Well, my parents said that you were at their house. Mm-hmm. And what do you think that's about? It was about a baby. Yeah? What about? A baby that was left. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about it? We're not here to judge you, Gail. Eastwood Ritchie was not prepared to be confronted at that particular moment, but she isn't surprised that she is about to be questioned. Her voice and facial expression show she would do anything to avoid this conversation. We don't know what was going on at the time. We don't want to speculate either, okay? So I don't think you want us to speculate. We're not here to arrest you, okay? We are here to take your DNA, okay? And we would like for you to tell us your side of the story, because we'd like to know. As of right now, you're not under arrest. You're not going to be arrested today. But we want to know what was going on. I think after 26 years, it's time. Don't you? It's had to be weighing on you. Should we go inside? Well, what we'd like to do is get your DNA, okay? And then we would like for you to come back to our, our sheriff's office so that we can talk. You're not being arrested, okay? But we need to sit down and we need to hear your side of the story, okay? All right, so I'm going to get my stuff real quick. We're going to take your DNA here. I have a signed search warrant from a Cuyahoga County Common Pleas judge. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I will give you a copy of that warrant. Mm -hmm. um, you will have a copy for you to keep. Um, the, the DNA process is a very non invasive process. I'm, just, I'm sure your parents probably told you. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, swipe a Q-tip on the inside of your mouth. We'll collect it real quick. And then we'll go back to the sheriff's office. And at some point today, we'll, we'll bring you back here. Okay. The connection between Eastwood Ritchie has been made through information found on a DNA ancestry site. Getting Eastwood Ritchie's DNA will confirm that the baby was hers and not that of a close relative. All right, so let me grab my stuff real quick and I'll be right back, okay? Um, obviously our car's right down the street. I have all the, all the stuff to grab. Can I let my employer know that I'm not going to be in to work? That's where I was going. Uh, just just one minute. Right right now, I don't want you to, to make any phone calls at the moment. I okay. I was just going to text her. Okay, where's your phone at? It's right here on my purse. Okay. Where do you work? A Noreen Laundergan School of Dance.
that all right? Yep, that's fine. And then I'm actually going to just hold your phone just for officer safety reasons, okay? And we'll explain that to you in a second. Sure. So you're a, a dance instructor? No, I'm the office manager. Oh, it's a dance school though? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give you a copy of the warrant, okay? This is your, your copy of the school. Here's your copy of the warrant that is signed by the Calder County County Judge, okay? Sorry to do this right here, but you have to understand that the warrant is signed here in Calgary County, so you need to execute it here in Calgary County. Real What did you say you worked at? You were telling the sergeant? Marine Laundering School of Dance. Oh, where's that at? Mayfield Village. Mayfield Village. She just texted her boss. Okay. And just let her know she's something came up. Okay. So. <clears throat> what this does is just collect some skin cells from the inside of your mouth. The warrant has been served, and Eastwood Ritchie is wanting to move the conversation indoors. She won't be able to keep this secret for long, but this isn't something she wants to do while the neighbors watch. If you haven't yet, check out my Patreon that is full of exclusive videos, like this one, about Luis Rivera. Unlike regular interrogations, Rivera, a murderer for hire, is given evidence as a part of a deal to reduce his sentence. You can watch the full video and many more at patreon.com backslash Stranger Stories Plus. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump in the car then. We'll give you a ride. Okay. If you want to jump in on this side back here, the story's going to be something on this side. Yeah, you don't have any knives, weapons, pepper spray, anything like that, do you? Okay. Sorry, that's a little dirty there, but go ahead and have a seat. Check your little. You want to take her first? Yeah. Listen, I'm just going to put your purse in the back. Is there anything else we can get you, Gail? No, water will be fine. There's some tissues there in the box, and we'll be right back with you, okay? We're going to close the door just to give you a little surprise here. Right?
Yeah. You know, if it's okay, right. we have my partner who's coming in. Right. Is there anything else we can get you? Do you need to use the facilities or anything, Gil? No. No, you sure you're okay. There's some tissues there for you. Um, as we indicated, Gil, um, at the house, our, our intention is at this point not to arrest you. You're not under arrest, okay? And uh, we would like to get your side of the story, though. Um, we just didn't want to do it there in your house or your kid come in or anything. That's just not a good situation, obviously, with the topic at hand. But I do need to, um, you know, because we brought you back here, um, you know, I want to go over a couple of things. You know, again, at this point, you're not under arrest. Okay, you are free to leave. Okay, so I'm going to just read you your rights real quick. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court of law. You have the right to an attorney. We'll provide one free free before any questioning if you desire. You can stop answering questions at any time. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. And with that being said, we do appreciate your your cooperation. Um, you know, obviously you had indicated that your parents had had told you that we had been out, so I'm sure that you kind of knew that this day was coming, uh, that we were going to be coming out to talk to you, and you know that we we got their DNA, which is you know what ultimately led us to you. And what we would like to do is we're, we're not here to judge you. We don't know what was going on in your life at the time. You know that you know, there probably weren't as many options for for people at the time. You know, and uh, but. But that being said, we'd like to, you know, get your side of what happened. So at that time, my husband and I were dating. Mm -hmm. We were sexually active. Mm -hmm. I did use contraceptives, but apparently one didn't work. I did not know I was pregnant at the time. Okay. I still had my menstrual cycles. Okay. And then my menstrual cycles ended up stopping. Okay. I don't know how long they were. That's you need to know that. I, I don't know. But at some point during the pregnancy, they stopped. Yes, it, it stopped. Um, Do you know about when that would have been? They don't. In relation, I mean, was it winter time? Or was it? I mean, is there anything you could kind of put to it that would tell you as to about when those menstrual cycles stopped? Um. I want to say about three months before the baby was actually born. Okay. And I honestly do not remember the date or the day when the baby was born. I do know it was in winter. It has been over 25 years, and it was a subject that Eastwood Ritchie was probably desperate to erase from her mind. Details such as the exact day would not be something she would have made a special effort to remember. Um, I was at work. I was a nanny for a family in Shaker Heights. Um, I was waiting for them to come home from school. I hadn't been feeling well at all that day. The next thing I knew, I was giving birth to a baby in the toilet. I didn't know what to do. My kids hadn't gotten home from school yet. The only thing I think of was to put the baby in a bag. I have no idea what 
the sex was. I never looked at it. Out to my car. I placed it in the trunk. was not buried, which made it easy for animals to drag it closer to the road. I didn't know what to do. About how far from the camp were you? I, I have no idea. I, I really don't know. I, I don't. Other than driving to the camp, I really don't. You couldn't no. go too far because you didn't know the road, so how would you get back, right? I, I guess. <clears throat> was anybody with you in the car? No. no. No, I was by myself. About how far off the road do you, do you remember you went? Like with, with the bag, like how far from the roadway you would have went? Or was there anything specific by there? Nothing specific, no. Um, Nothing that stands out to you or anything? No. Um, I just, I remember stopping on the road. There was a lot of snow. I, I do remember a lot of snow, and I 
walked in as far as I could and, and I left the back. Did you ever follow or read any stories or anything, you know, in the news or seeing news clipping, you know, stories or anything like that about anything? I did not. No. I, I did not know the baby was found. Okay. At what point do you, do you know that the baby was found? Did, I mean, was, there, was it recently? Was it a long time ago? Or No. I, you were at my parents. So, so that's the first time. time. That you had known that the baby was found? That a baby was found. Okay. Now, getting back to, uh, you said you were at this, this family's house in Shaker Heights when the baby was born, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember their name or where they lived at? They do. Okay. What was their name? I'd rather not. Why is that? Just to, I, I, I'm. Well, I, I, you can understand, Joe. We, oh, we need okay. to kind of verify some things, and I'm not trying to give a hard time, but, you know, okay. I, obviously I mean, what you've told us, but we need to go back and try to verify some of those things. Um, it's been a long time, so, um, you know, and, and you said it was during the week, correct? Because the kids weren't home from school yet? That is correct. Right, so you were kind of a nanny in the afternoon? I was a nanny all day. All day. Okay. But you said that some, some of the kids went to school? There were two friends? children. There's two children. And they would yeah. go after school? Yeah. And then what time would they come home from school? Um, 3, 3.30. And you would stay till about what time? Mm, 6. Usually 6. 6 o'clock and then you would go and that's when you went home from there? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Do you remember what day it was? Was it Thursday, maybe, or I, Friday? I honestly don't remember the day or the month. But you said you went to a weekend camp that, that weekend, right? I don't know if it was that weekend. It may have been a whole week. Okay. Um, before. I, I don't remember. So you don't remember if the, if the baby was in your trunk for like a week or just a it, couple of days? It could have been. It could have been yeah. as long as a week? Possibly, yes. It is hard to believe that the baby was left in the trunk for that long. There would be a high risk of it being discovered. And you said that you were in the, in the bathroom of the home? Yes. When the baby was born, but, but nobody yes. else was home at the time? No. No? You were by yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, obviously, there would have been, you know, the afterbirth and the umbilical cord. How were you able to... Um, you know, cut the umbilical cord. And, and I didn't. Can, you didn't cut the umbilical cord? No. No? Okay. I did not. So you left just basically everything attached to the baby? I did. The, the afterbirth, everything yes. was was still attached to the baby? Yes. Okay. Um, and obviously, um, you know that the, the baby was born alive. I, I don't, don't remember. I don't recall it ever crying. Okay. But it's not like it was stillborn or anything. I mean, the, the coroner's report shows that it, it actually was breathing. Okay. So um, at some point, you, I mean, there had to be some something kind of that you heard or, or saw, and the baby had to be moving. Or it, it's possible. I, I don't. I don't remember. I, I remember picking it up and placing it in the bag. Did it actually fall into the toilet when you, when yes. you gave birth? Yes. So everything just kind of fell into the toilet? Yes. Okay, not onto the floor or anything like that? No. Okay, so the baby was actually in the toilet? Yes. Okay. And then where did you get the bag from and all that kind of stuff? Um, I believe it was under the kitchen sink. Under the kitchen sink, so just a normal trash bag. Yeah. Do you remember what color it was or anything? Um, I'm sorry, it could be clear, white, black. I believe it was black. Okay, so like a dark colored trash bag. Yeah. And everything was still attached to the baby when you when you yeah. right. when you put it into the bag. Was it still moving or anything? I I don't recall.
recall it moving. You don't recall? No. You said you were able to, to clean the bathroom up prior to the kids you were nannying returning home? Yes. Okay. And did you, after after you put the baby into that bag, did you immediately take it out to the car or was there some time lapse where you were cleaning? Um, I probably cleaned and then took it out. Okay. I, I don't, I don't remember how, what. I understand it's been 26 years, you know. And I don't even remember what year it was born. Okay. Well, you, you, it'd be safe to say you know it was some time between when the kids would have left for school and when they returned from school. Yes. Okay. When did you marry your husband? 94. Right. So it was prior to that, correct? Yes. Okay. And when did you move into the house that you currently September of 93. Okay, and was it prior to that that, that this baby was born? I, yes. Because you were still living at home, correct? Yes. And did you move right in with Mark into that home? Yes. In September of 93? Yes. And you're positive it was before that? Yes. Okay. Um, were you at that camp at all? Um, you know, during those those couple of years, or were you you and Mark involved in that camp or anything during that time frame? Oh, you said you went to a a, a weekend camp, right? Right, with okay. the um, the way they um, chaperone um, some of our youth group okay. on our church. Was Mark there as well? No. No. Um, so Mark was he ever in, involved with the camp out there? Yes, he was. Okay, at that age or later on in life or? Uh, well, not, I mean, he went as a camper. Mm -hmm. He didn't go as a, he was never a counselor. So he would have went as, when he was younger then, correct? Mm -hmm. but, what, what, what age did he basically age out of being a camper? Seniors. Seniors high in high school. So once you graduate high school, you're no longer an attendee. You can choose to be a counselor? Right. Okay. Right, so, but when you graduate high school, you can still kind of go that summer, correct? Yes. And so, and then after that, you're kind of uh, aged out, if you will. Yes. And, and then you can come back as a counselor or something like that. Yes. Okay. Um, how long before you moved into the house did you say the baby was born? Was it months, weeks, years? Well, it was in the winter. It was in winter? So was it like that winter before you moved in, or was it a couple winters before? It may have been January of that year. I I don't. But you think it was that year in '93 when you moved into the house? I. I don't, I don't remember what year it was. Okay. But it was I'm, cold and I'm, snowy. I guess it could have been at the end of 92, maybe December of 92, but um, the kids would have been home for Christmas break, so it must have been January of 93. January of 93, somewhere around there, that the baby was actually born. Yeah. Okay. Were you active sexually with anybody else yeah. besides Mark prior to that? I was not. No. So you're you're confident that Mark is, is the father? Mark's the father, yeah. Okay. Um, now, getting back to the um, like how the baby was born and placed in the bag. I did not cut it. The umbilical cord was still with the baby but may have been severed by animals. How did that umbilical cord get cut down? I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't cut it. You didn't cut it? No. And you're positive of that? I am. You're, and obviously we're talking about 26 years, so there's, you know, as you said, you know, some things that you're not real Yes, I sure. understand. But there's no possible way that you cut that umbilical cord. Almost certain I didn't. 
is it impossible or are you positive that you didn't cut the umbilical cord? Because there's a couple of things, Gail, you, you, you've told us a lot, but there's a couple of things that I am kind of struggling with. And some of that is, is you know, to do with the baby because, um, you know, the, a full autopsy was done. The, the, the baby was found, obviously, that's corneal. Um, and the umbilical cord was cut. Okay. And the coroner's report can show that the, that the baby was born alive okay. and that the baby had taken breaths. Okay. So that tells me that the baby was moving and and there had to be some type of screaming or something that you heard or saw. This is not necessarily true. Not all babies cry. And since Eastwood Ritchie was not under a doctor's care, there is the possibility that something was wrong with the infant. I don't know if that's just something that you don't want to remember, obviously due to the circumstances. It's possible, but I, I really don't remember it ever making a sound. How about in the bag? Was it still moving around in the bag? Or had it kind of maybe drowned in the toilet? Or was it still kind of moving around in the bag? Well, I can tell you it didn't drown, drown in the toilet because it didn't have water in its lungs. Um, so I no, I don't think it stayed in the toilet long okay. before I put it in the bag. So even in the bag, it's it's got some oxygen in there. It's 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 breathing. It's taking some breaths. It's probably moving. It, it's got to be making some kind of noise. I really don't remember it making noise. I really don't. Do you remember the bag making any noise? Was the bag moving, yeah. crinkling? Not that I'm aware of, I suppose it could have been when I put it in the car. But either in the toilet or when you quickly put it in the bag, it had to be making some kind of noise or moving around. Or... But ultimately, due to your condition at the time, your intention was no matter what, you weren't going to keep this baby. I didn't know what to do. Didn't what to do, but uh, under I mean, because of those circumstances, you didn't know what to do. Was it because you were young? Because you weren't married? Um, you know, you're afraid to tell your parents. I understand you're Baptist. I was definitely afraid to tell my parents. My father was very adamant about. Mind up to you know 
you weren't in the right spot at the time, you weren't telling anybody, this was kind of what you were planning on doing, for lack of better words. I suppose. I mean, had you planned on, I mean, what, what were your plans when you found I, out you're pregnant? And I, I, I don't, I don't know. Eastwood Ritchie may not have had any sort of plan. It would have been easy for her to go into shock or denial, completely avoiding thinking about the subject so she didn't have to make a decision. I don't know what, I don't remember, I don't know what my intentions were. I mean, were you going to, I mean, it, at least for some period of time, you, you know you're pregnant and you're going to you're gonna keep this baby or you're going to tell Mark at some point? Um, or are you just going to get rid of it and act like it never happened? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I've never been, never been good with confrontation. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I always tend to keep things to myself mm -hmm. to avoid confrontation. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what I don't know if I ever had a plan or what I was going to do or I don't, I don't remember. What do you think Mark would have said if you would have told him at the time? I'm not sure. Had you thought about that? Like what you were going to tell Mark or when the baby came? I, I don't even know if I thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was going to tell him or... I don't Did you think there was going to be confrontation with him when you told him? Um, not in a, in a bad way, but I've... I've always had trouble um, dealing with things that situations. It was probably 
yes, I was probably afraid that that he would he would leave. I want nothing to do with with that. The couple would go on to have three children after they were married. When Mark learned of the first pregnancy, he was understandably shocked. And what what makes you think that about Mark? You'd obviously known him for quite some time. That is true. Um, I think I was afraid also for what his family would think. Um, So I always go to the worst scenario and not the best scenario. And what was the worst scenario in your mind? Him leaving. Him leaving. That was the worst scenario. And you didn't want him to leave you. So you're, in your mind, the way to keep him is to not have this baby because you wanted to keep him around, right? So that's why you hadn't told him, and that's why you hadn't told your parents. And I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, so it seems like this was kind of your plan, whether or not it happened that day or another day, but this is what what you had anticipated happening, or the outcome being. You weren't going to tell anybody, you weren't going to let anybody know that this was happening, and whether it happened that day or another day, this was your intentions because you didn't want to lose Mark and you didn't want to upset your family. Sorry. I don't want to put my... Was that your intention? Okay. It would appear that way. Because in your mind, if you tell Mark, he's going to leave you. If you tell your parents, you're going to be ashamed. And if his family finds out, you don't know what they're going to say. And we're not here to judge you, Gail. But if that was your intention, then... I don't think it was my Had you seen a doctor at all? No. No. Had you been to a doctor prior to that? No. No? You, you didn't go to a regular doctor? You didn't have like a family doctor that you saw if you got sick or anything like that? Mm -hmm. No. Regardless of whether she chose to give the baby up for adoption or leave it in the woods, Eastwood Ritchie would not want to go to a doctor and have the pregnancy on her medical record. Now, once, once we were older, the pediatrician, um, we didn't, my parents didn't, you know, make us go to a doctor. You didn't have, like, an annual physical or no. anything like that? Did you play any sports in high school? No. No? Didn't do any kind of extracurriculars no. where you were required to? No. When's the last time you saw a doctor prior to the baby being born? What'd you say? Oh, I was maybe 15 or 16. You were 15 or 16 was the last time you went to the doctor? Yeah. So what would happen if you got sick, like a cold or you got the flu? Where, where would you go? We didn't go anywhere. You didn't go anywhere. If you need antibiotics or anything like that, strep throat, ear infections. No, I don't recall going. Did you? Did your family have health care insurance? I don't know. You don't remember? No, I. I don't even know if my mother has health care now. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know if we had health care then. 
So you hadn't been to the doctor, even when you found out that you were pregnant, you had never been to a doctor or anything yeah. like that? Did you think about seeing a doctor? No. Was it something that came up in your mind, like maybe I should see a doctor? Obviously, for a couple months, you knew you were pregnant. Right. Um, I, I didn't. Mm. No, I didn't. I didn't know who to go see, who to contact. <clears throat> So for basically the last 26 years, you've just kind of kept this bottled up inside? Yeah. Is there anybody that you've confided in or knew that you were pregnant? Or? I have not. Nobody knew that you were pregnant? Nobody knew I was pregnant. You've never told anybody about it? I've never told anyone about it. How about Mark? How how do you think he's gonna deal with finding out what happened? I'm not sure. What do you think he's gonna say about it? I'm not sure. How do you think he should go about finding out? Well, I'm hoping that I can tell him. Okay. And what would you say to him? I think I would just go through what we just went through and tell him. You're not sure how he's going to take that? Sure, he'll be upset. Do you think he deserves any, any decision back then? Or any right to know? And be a part of that decision that you made for the two of you? Back then, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Today, it's a whole different. I understand that you may have made a, a different choice knowing what you know now, but do you think that... It doesn't really answer the question. Do you think that he deserved the right to have a, a choice in that decision that you made for the two of you? Yeah. What do you think his choice would have been back then if, if he would have known? May have been accepting of it. So he wasn't really given that opportunity. Is it because he would have wanted you to keep it? No. Yeah. So you would you think he would have wanted you to keep it? Probably. <clears throat> so is that why you didn't tell him? Because you didn't want to? Because you weren't sure what to do? You didn't want him to have you keep it because you weren't ready? Um. That kind of makes sense why you wouldn't tell him. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense if he wouldn't, if he wouldn't stick with you because he married you, you bought a house together, you had kids together. So I think his intentions were that, but I don't think you were ready for a child at that time. And he was obviously a little bit older, so maybe he was, was more scared. Um, about being a mom? No. No, I worked with children. I I was okay with 
having children. I think I was more concerned of his loving me. It's always been in the back of my mind. So do you think you would have loved the job better or more? No. You wanted his attention? No, no. No, I... Um, really the only man that ever loves me. Um, and I wasn't sure if we'd get married. Um, I was always afraid of, of losing him. Um, I didn't want to lose them. And I think back then, my thought must have been that that I would lose him if I didn't know any better. Losing Mark was possibly the biggest motivation for Eastwood Ritchie to make the choice she did. The thought of losing him was so devastating that nothing else mattered. So you would rather lose a child than take the risk of losing Mark to the only man that's ever loved you? So that was your thought process at the time? I think so. And it's something that, this is a very traumatic experience. And this is not something that goes away. This is something that, you know, obviously has been in your mind for the past 26 years. I can't imagine a day has gone by that you haven't thought about it. Well, not ever knowing if the baby was found, I didn't. You never saw, I mean, there was news articles, newspapers, news stories, even up until 2016. There were news stories on, on WKYC and different news. And, and there was, you know, reward posters and all kinds of stuff. They had a, a, a ceremony for the baby. I did not know. You never heard that throughout the years? I did not. What did what threw your mind when you found out that we were at your parents' house two weeks ago? Um. So my dad called me. So I was at home. Um, I just went through a whole anxiety and. Couldn't breathe. Kind of been like that for the last two weeks, off and on. Here an anxiety attack? Um, I wouldn't call them attacks, just hypertension, I guess. thinking about what 
what was going to happen. Did you tell your dad when you spoke with him? Did I tell him what? Did, did he know? Did you express to him that that it was your child? I did not. Do you think he was able to determine that while he was on the phone with you when you when you had your anxiety strike? I don't think so. I was short because I was getting ready to leave for work. So then his memory of the details weren't the best, so... He's older. He's a little bit older, and he was... He is. Kind of confused is. a little bit. Yes. He had a massive heart attack three years ago, and this is... Um, so I just kind of let him ramble on like he does. He told him that I had to go because I had to leave for work. Although Eastwood Ritchie believes that she fooled her father, it is possible that he realized something was wrong by her manner of speaking. So right now, the only people that you've ever talked to about this are the two of us sitting here in this room. Mm -hmm. There's no one outside of this room you've ever spoken to about this or that would know about this. I have not. The, uh, the house that you said you you gave birth at. Oh, yeah. Where, where was that located at? Shaker Heights. Shaker Heights. Um, Woodbury, I mean, or Woodbury Road. Woodbury Road. What was the, the name of the owners, the last name of the owners? Um, Cantor McNulty family. Cantor McNulty family. How long had you worked for them when, when this occurred? Um, well, I worked up, let's see. Um, my twins were born in 97, and that's when I left, I stopped working in June of, excuse me, June of 97, or May of 97, um, and I had worked for them for four and a half years at that point. When you left in 97? Yes. You worked for four and a half years? Four, yeah, four and a half. It may have been, yeah, I think it was four and a half at that point. So you, you stayed working for them for the duration of time then after all this occurred until you said the birth of your twins? Yes. And those are your, your oldest children of the twins? Yes. Okay. Um, back, back to the, the day of the birth. Um, you said you retrieved the bag from under the kitchen sink, is that correct? Yes. Okay. What method of closing the bag up did you use when you put it in the trunk of the car? I think I just tied it in a knot. Just tied it shut? Mm -hmm. And it was a, a plastic, uh, and you said black plastic trash type bag, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then you said you can't recall if it was in the trunk for a week, if it was a, a week had gone by prior to when you went to the, the youth retreat or just a few days. That's correct. Okay. I don't, don't remember the time frame at all. Would anyone else have driven that vehicle? No. That was your your car? You owned that car? Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of car was it? Do you remember? Um, that time I had a Ford Taurus. What color was it? A tan. A tan for tours. Mm -hmm. Was it, did you purchase the car or was it something your parents bought and it was just, you were the only one who drove it? No, I'm pretty sure it was in my name. It was in your name? Yeah. So this was 93, so what year would that car have been? Was it newer, older? It was older, it was a used car. Yeah. I don't remember what year it was. Do you remember how long you had it for? Um, Did you still have it when your twins were born? Oh, no. No? No. No. Um, I 
don't even think. I don't even know if I can remember if I had it while we were married. It wasn't a very good car. Yeah, it was over. It was. What year did you get married? 94, October 1st. October 94? You said you moved in, what, September? September 93. 93. And that's to the house that you currently live in now? During your pregnancy, Mark never knew that you were pregnant. He, he could never tell. Did you remain active with him during that time frame? I believe so. Yeah. And you could never tell that you were pregnant. It never came up. Like, um, He never said anything. I never said anything. Some women are able to carry a baby to full term without ever realizing they're pregnant. And those around them often miss the signs because they're not looking for them. Time you guys had to be talking about some type of a future together because just a few short months later you kind of moved in together and within a year and a half you're getting married so there had to be some kind of talk so we did purchase the house in 93 mm -hmm. um but he never let on that um uh, that he was gonna i had no idea that he was gonna propose to me in december of 93 to him. It wasn't even something that you guys had talked about, about having a future and kids, and <laughs> never came up in conversation. It just kind of came up out of the blue. Right. Um, and we had, we had talked about it, but he was, because of purchasing the house, um, just felt like it wasn't time that he could purchase a ring or anything like that. Financially, he was kind of like, strapped. Yes, he felt strapped. Um, did it kind of come up in conversation? Yes, like I'm, sure, I'm sure it did, yeah. And, and what was, I mean, was he always of the opinion he wanted, like a large family, or um, what, what did you two talk all, about? I think we both, we both agreed that we thought three children was a good, nice number of kids. Um, so you both had wanted kids. Yes. And and talked about having a couple, at least three. Yes. And it was a good number, so. Yes. And they had come up throughout your dating? Um, periodically. I mean, it wasn't quite a conversation all the time. No, no, I'm sure it wouldn't be. But you guys talked about having a future together and, yes. and raising a family. Yes. So it seemed like you wanted to have kids. Yes. And eventually you, you did have kids. Yeah. So again, you know, what is it that, that was going through your mind there in March? That, that made you think if, if this was coming up in conversation and you guys were talking about having a future and getting married and having three kids, what, what, what is it that well, he wants kids when you guys are dating or talking about it in the future? What is it that made you not want to tell him? I, I really, I was, I was scared. I was scared to what my father would think. Um, Eastwood Ritchie was 22 at the time and fully capable of moving away from home. Even if her family disapproved, she did not have to continue to stay with them. And I... I was scared just because we weren't married and... But you knew you wanted kids eventually. Yes. I didn't know that, that. yeah. Yes. You, you told us earlier, too, that you think, had you told him at the time, that he would have wanted you to keep the child. It's possible, yes. But I don't think that was what was going through my head. That wasn't going through my head. I understand you said you're scared, but I, I just don't quite understand what you're afraid of. Other than I understand your parents know that, that you're pregnant out of wedlock. But as far as, you know, telling Mark, you, you guys are dating for four or five years at that point at least. Mm -hmm. You guys are talking about having a future. You're talking about occasionally, not, not every day. 
but talking about getting married, talking about having kids, you both want kids, mm-hmm. you know, later that year he buys a house and proposes to you, mm-hmm. um, it, it doesn't, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with the fact that you're, you're scared to tell him. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's not like it's just left there is a one night thing. I, I, I know, I, I, I don't. It seems like there's more, and and you're giving us a lot, but there, there's just something else that was going through your mind at that time. And I don't know what it is. If you know, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. If you just weren't ready at the time, or um, you know, what 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 was going through your mind? I could see if Mark saying, "Listen, I don't want kids. I never want kids. We're never getting married." But He's talking about it, and you guys are having conversations about it. You guys are even talking about we want three kids, and lo and behold, you have three kids. Um. And very shortly after, you're moving in, you're getting engaged. You're within a year and a half. You're you're married and living together. I'm not sure, really, not. The detective is pressing Eastwood Ritchie for a better answer than I don't know. He is willing to entertain the possibility that the act wasn't premeditated, but that suspension of belief is harder to maintain the longer she refuses to be honest about her thoughts at the time. I was afraid of losing him. Because of it. But again, he's talking about the other thing he wants to have kids. I, I understand. I, I would think most women would think opposite, that it was a way to keep him. That it would almost be a way to keep him. We have a child together and it's it's kind of a way to... But I, I don't understand how, how that would make you afraid to lose him. You guys have had a relationship for several years. You're, you're in a relationship. We, we, yes. Yes, we were in a relationship. Um, it, it just, I, I was afraid. I, my father finding out. Um, that's all I can think of. I, I was afraid of losing him. I was never, ever, ever felt certain that he loved me. Um, so. I can understand it. Never the prettiest girl. I wasn't skinny. I wasn't the smartest girl. I never thought highly of myself. Was there a concern that it could be somebody else's? No. No. I could see that if you're worried that, you know, maybe it was somebody else's and you're afraid to tell them. I know. 
just really struggle with that you know, thing that, you know, just in a few months you guys are moving in and getting married. And well, we weren't even looking at houses. I understand that, but, but again, it had to be coming up in conversation, you know, even if it's just occasionally. So it's, you guys are building a, a relationship and been together. Eastwood Ritchie is becoming slightly more inconsistent. She claims that she had no self-confidence and was unsure that Mark truly loved her. But about the time the baby was born, they were talking about taking permanent steps in their relationship. Again, was it that maybe that would divert some of that love from you to to the baby? And the baby would be getting his attention, and you wanted his attention. No, I, no, I don't think I thought that at all. Why don't you take a little break? Uh, step out. Do you need to use the ladies' room or anything? Um, it's not too much trouble. Oh, I'm so no, I'll take it out of the Here. You can make it right here. Hey, you can uh, use the one across from my go for his office instead. Okay. Very quick. Okay. Is there anything else I can get you, Gail?
When asked if she had been pregnant at any point before the baby she left in the woods, Eastwood Ritchie is only able to give an extremely weak negative reply. It is unconvincing, as is her answer about whether or not her husband ever knew she was pregnant. I never told him I was pregnant. I was going to the doctor. He's, he's pretty adamant that he didn't know. He wasn't sure of the time frame. He said it could have been around 92, 93. It might have been a little bit, you know, a couple of years prior. But he wasn't sure. But he was, in fact, aware. And you were telling him you were going to the doctor's office on a regular basis and seeing a doctor. And he knew that you two were having a child. Is there any other pregnancy or any way that he knew about this? Maybe you just don't remember? Again, we're talking about a long time ago. If he knew, he never told me he knew. Well, he said that you guys had talked about it and you had told him that you were going to see a doctor. Were you pregnant again prior to this baby we're talking about today and you never told him? No. So you for sure only been pregnant three times in your life? I had a miscarriage before the twins, but we were married then. Okay. When do you no. think that was? Oh, um, I, wanted to, I think it was 95. Okay. And he was obviously aware of that pregnancy or no? Yeah. Do you recall about how long you were pregnant? Um, pretty sure we heard, I heard the heartbeat. Do you know what trimester that would have been? Um, since 95. Um, I know I lost the baby in September. The 95, you think? Yes. Okay. Which doctor were you seeing at that time? Uh, I believe it was Dr. Herman. Herman? And where was his office was located? At Hillcrest. At Hillcrest Hospital? I think he was across the street in those medical buildings. Okay. How many times did you go to see Dr. Herman? For that pregnancy and then, um, for the twins. Okay. But how many times did you see him for that pregnancy specifically? The, the first one? Mm -hmm. The one that you had a, that you lost? The miscarriage? Yes. Um, two or three? Two or three appointments you had with him? Yeah. And was he aware that you had the miscarriage? Yes. The so Dr. Hart was? Yes, so he was at Hillcrest and he had the miscarriage. You were in the hospital and what happened? Yes. So that one is documented? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Well, if you're in the hospital, it should be. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that was 95-ish. You said September of 95? Yes. Yeah. But you weren't sure how long you were, how far along you were? Um, maybe two months. Two, two and a half to three. So most likely still in the first trimester? Yeah. Was there ever a time prior to the incident we're talking about today that you ever thought you could have been pregnant? Mm -hmm. No. You said that you... Uh, you and your husband, you, did you like him when you were 16? Did you guys date a little bit when you were 16? We did. What uh, What caused you guys to separate? You said you separated for a while. He didn't, didn't ask me out anymore. Okay, so you went on like a couple dates or were you guys kind of, yeah. you know, exclusively seeing each other? Oh, yeah, no, just a couple dates. Not a couple dates? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys have like an argument or a disagreement over something specific? No, he was for? never called to ask me out again, and then I reached out to him. After a period of time? Mm -hmm. And how long was that period of time? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I was 
17. Right. What made you What made you reach out to him? I liked him. Mm -hmm. I was curious if he'd go back out with me again. And you said, obviously, during the time around this event and before that you were you were sexually active with with your husband now, your boyfriend at the time. When when were you guys first active? Um, not till maybe eighteen. When you were eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, the detective is searching for the answers that will bring this cold case to a close. Still, there is a possibility that Eastwood Ritchie has done this before. And if she admits to that, the prosecution will have an easier time convincing a jury that this was premeditated. I think so, yeah. So was it the second time that you guys had started dating again? Yeah. Okay. Did they tell you what, what caused you to have a miscarriage? Was there anything like were you having some type of a medical issue? Or? I, no, I just started bleeding during the night. Okay. And you got taken to the hospital then, I take mm -hmm. it? Mark took me to the hospital. Mark took you to the hospital and, mm -hmm. and got crushed there. Mm -hmm. Did you disclose during that pregnancy that you had been pregnant prior? No. No. Did they ask you that? No. No, they never asked you if you had previous pregnancy? No. Any kind of doctor's paperwork normally? When you go to a doctor, and you said you hadn't been to a doctor previously right. for many years, so right. normally they make you fill out some, you know, kind right. of intake paperwork, if you I'd will. probably filled out paperwork, right. yes. So I, I would think that that was on there, you know, any previous pregnancies, especially when you go to see a, you know, a, a gynecologist or right. something on those lines that, you know, they would ask you, yeah. you know, if you had previous pregnancies, previous, you know, times that you lost babies. Um, so I would think that was on there, but you don't remember, it was or it wasn't, or you don't recall? Or I, I don't recall. It, um, it could have been, I I don't. But you don't remember if you would have thought it out accurately or if you would have lied about that, about the previous pregnancy that you had? Well, if it was on there, I probably didn't mention it. So you probably would have lied, correct? Is that fair to say if it was on there? Yes. Okay. Have you ever gone back to the, the area where you dropped the, the bag with the baby in it? I have not. Have you ever I tried to find the area I, again? No. No? Okay. Well, you've been out to a camp of something, then, right? Because your you kids went there, yeah. and I think, um, and I think, do, do, do your kids work there, Richard? Yes, I have yeah. two that are working there this summer. What are they doing there? Um, my son is doing maintenance, and when Courtney is done with her first round of internship at a daycare um, in Geneva, then she'll go out and um, she's kind of um, program manager, I guess is a good way to explain it. You've been out to the camp since since this incident, correct? Yeah. yeah. How does that make you feel when you go out to it? Does it bother you? I just go to camp. But obviously, you know that you left left your child, you know, just in a, in a very close proximity to that camp. I I don't remember where. But obviously, you were at the camp and you drove from yeah. there, so it was somewhere close by. That doesn't yeah. kindle those. Those memories, or it had it, no, no, it's something it just left in the past. Mm -hmm. When you were out at the camp at the time that you you got rid of the baby, you were you were functioning that weekend as a youth counselor. Is that correct? Yes, I think I had a couple of teens there. Okay, was there any other counselors with you that weekend, or were you the sole? No, I think I was the only one. How many how many teens do you think would have gone with you with just um, one counselor? There were three or four girls. It was like a weekend long retreat, yes. or so you stayed a couple nights. Yes. Okay. Do you remember any of those girls' names by chance? Yes. Yeah. Who would they have been? Um, at the time when they were teenagers, it was um, Erica and Monica Wilkins, 
Kristen. I don't recall. Oh, their older sister might have been there, Chris. What are Erica and Monica's names now? Do you know what their married names are? Um, one is Stovall and um, I'm drawing a blank on Monica's. How old would they have been? Um, so they were teenagers? Maybe 16, 17. It was cold, like wintertime. What was was it there was. any any kind of a special purpose for this camp? It was probably a winter retreat. A winter retreat, so it would have been like spring break maybe? or No. No, just a weekend getaway? Right. Okay. Talking to some of the witnesses would normally be helpful. But in this case, the detectives are unlikely to gain any new information. It has been over 25 years, and any teenagers at that time would not have been paying close attention to their camp counselor. You said it doesn't bother you to go out to that camp at all? Well, it hadn't. Mm -hmm. Did you ever wonder what happened or think about, I wonder what happened? I think I did for a while after. Um, but then I never heard anything, so I think it just, I had three kids that I was raising and involved with. You, you said you were obviously still with your husband during, during the pregnancy. You stayed together and you said he was not aware of it. What measures did you take to hide that pregnancy? You said you were still intimately involved with him. How were you able to keep him from knowing you were pregnant? Well, like I said, I, I was always heavy set. Um, so I don't recall really showing or like women do. Um, did you get a lot of weight to remember? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't. I think I probably stayed about the same as I always was. I was always over 200, 230 mm -hmm. in weight. You know, every woman's different in different pregnancies. Sometimes you gain weight, sometimes you don't. And, mm -hmm. you know, so every time it could be different. Did you take any other steps to try to hide it from Mark? No. No. Because obviously you don't want him to know. Right. Mm -hmm. But you didn't have to do anything else to keep it from him? You just... I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Since this has all been kindled up in the last two weeks, how, what what's going on with you? What what is this? What are you feeling right now? Um, ashamed, embarrassed. Um, I thought about taking a bunch of pills today. When did you think about that today? When when you saw us or earlier before that? No, all day. All day even. I woke up with that feeling. Are you still thinking about that now? Um, so when I was got myself to go to work, still had it in the back of my mind that I would do that. And what would the goal of that behavior be to end your life? Yes. Okay. As we told you earlier, Gail, we don't want to see that. We're not here to judge you. No. There's a lot of other people judging me right now. And like who? 
Who is judging you right now? Well, myself. God. I'll let my husband know. Oh. Th that is our concern at this point, is your safety. Not only from yourself, but from other people. Do you, how do you think Mark will react to this? I mean, are you concerned that he... Has he ever been violent with you? No, never. No. No, he's been a wonderful husband and father. Couldn't have asked for a better person in my life. Obviously, this is... And that's why I struggled so much with trying to tell him or... Eastwood Ritchie does not show true remorse over her actions, only embarrassment that people will find out what she has done. What about his family? Are they... Oh, God. Oh, God. We have a wonderful family. But how do you think they're going to react? Would you be concerned for your safety from their family? Not As my family? safety, no. Mm -hmm. No, I just don't think I'll ever be spoken to again. Where do you think the safest place for you would be right now? We're not so sure it would be back with Mark. We're not saying it, it, it's not safe, but... And we're not sure how he's going to deal with that. This is something, obviously you've known this and, and battled with it for 26 years. This is something that has been literally dropped in his lap today out of nowhere. And I, I don't know how he's going to react to that. And we're concerned for him and for you. We have no intentions of running out of here telling anybody what, what the crux of our conversation was today. However, you have to understand over the last 26 years, this was a very big case. And, and, and in that regard, I don't know how you didn't know about it. There's been news stories, newspaper articles, a news story that some of the original investigators uh, did uh, on the news. It was probably a 12, 15 minute um, article that they did on the news. So this is something that you know, was and is something today very big in the community here in Jarvis County. There's people that, like we said, you know, donated clothes. They donated the burial expenses. There's a headstone. Yeah, there's a headstone and a memorial. They they, they did a ceremony and, and did a headstone and a memorial. And uh, your child is, is referred to as Jarvis Baby. Because so many members of the community donated different things for your child. <clears throat> and, that, and they maintain that, that grave stuff. So um, th this is something that is very big in the community. And with that being said, um, you know, we are concerned for your welfare and, you know, what is the best place for you? So where do you think the best place? Would it be with your sister, maybe? Probably not. No, why, why do you think that? We have not told her. We did have a search warrant for her DNA as well, uh, but we did not execute that today. So we have not made contact with her. We've only made contact with you and your husband today. Mm -hmm. Even if her husband is willing to forgive her, Eastwood Ritchie might be in danger from the general public. It is a famous local case, and many people have strong feelings about the death of an infant. Where do you think you'd be safest, Gail? Do 
are you still having thoughts or, or considerations of ending your life or harming yourself? I guess not. It's all out on the table. I guess probably not. Do you feel better in that it's all out on the table? In some way, there's got to be some burden left off of you, you know, something you've kept in for 26 years. It's only been something that I've known. I've I mean, dealt sometimes with a are, lot of burdens. What other burdens have you dealt with? Growing up wasn't easy in my house. What is that? My father was an alcoholic for 16 years of my life. Is that easy to deal with? No. He was verbally abusive. So when I said I never thought highly of myself, that's where that comes from. From dealing with the alcohol. And speaking to a lot of your family, I understand that even though your dad was adopted, that, um, that was something that was, uh, you know, his parents were, were not known to be great parents. I didn't know that. <clears throat> Anything else? Yeah, I just want to ask you about the situation with your father and two of his siblings. Um, when your grandmother passed, they were given up for adoption. Your father was only like 18 months old, I believe. And he was given up for adoption. Is there a place that, that you can be safe tonight or that you would feel safe? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Am I allowed to see Mark? Um, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, to check on that. Yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you yes or no. That's a, again, we don't know how Mark is taking this. Because we, we haven't seen him yet. He's not here right now. And, and obviously, if he's highly agitated, I don't want to expose you to any type of, of risk of harm. Our concern and our responsibility is your safety at this point. And where is the safest place to be, not only from other people, but from yourself? In, in talking to you, you've already had thoughts of harming yourself. Today, I'm going to venture to guess, was not the first time that you considered taking those pills. It was. It was the first time. Did you yeah. did you consider harming yourself any days prior to today? No. What what triggered that today? Um, just thoughts in my head. What were those thoughts? Just trying to spare family embarrassment. Shame and then want my kids to see me. The kids still love you, Gil. Mm. It's not going to change your life for you. You're still their mother. Eastwood Richie's family will have to go through a period of adjustment as they come to terms with what she has done. Their initial reaction seems to be what she fears the most, even more than the legal consequences. What was it specifically about today that changed, though? Because you've kind of known for probably close to two weeks that this day had to be coming. Right. I knew that what you just said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just... Going over in my head what, what to do, how to tell Mark, did you try to tell him in the last couple of weeks? Um, I've tried in my head to think how to tell him, yes. Yeah. Mm. 
like I said, I've never been good at confrontation. I've gotten better over the years. Well, to me, didn't want to do it just because I don't want my kids coming home and finding me. You need to think about your kids. Because it's going to harm them even worse. It's done and done in the mistakes you've made. But to do something like that is only going to hurt them even worse. Have you ever seeked any other mental health professionals or seen counselors or anything, Al-Anon, AA, anything like that, to deal with some of the issues from your father? No. No. previous no, it wasn't to, to be spoken of. It was just... Have you ever previously had thoughts of harming yourself? Yeah. No. It's never been an issue. What is it about your sisters that you don't think will be safe? Well, I suppose they'll be safe, but her husband's a police officer. Mm -hmm. So I don't. And do you get along with him? Yeah, I get along with him fine. Do you think he's going to, I mean, is there a concern with him? Or, I mean, he, he's you know, still your brother-in-law. I know, but I, I don't want to take this into their hands. Okay. And you don't think you'd be safe at your parents' house? Well, I probably would, but they don't know yet. They don't know. We haven't told them. I don't know if they've put it together. I don't think that they have. Is there anywhere that you could think of that you would be safe? I guess I don't want to take my mess into anyone else's house. Well, as we told you earlier, our intent was not to put you in jail tonight. But we do have a duty for your safety as well. Gail, if we if we had to talk to to a mental health professional, would you be willing to do that? Would you speak with someone if we were able to find someone to talk with you? Sure. Let's see if we can get something set up. Gail, we, we, we have genuine concerns for your safety at this point. Yeah. You may not think so, but we do. So we need to see if we can get something worked out for you. So if there's anything you could think of, I understand that you don't want to bring your issues into somebody else's house, and I respect that. But we also don't know. I mean, your kids don't know. Your husband just found out. We don't know how it's going to go. Okay, when was the last time you ate today? 
said before you left for work. I'll see if we can get you. Do you want me to see if I can find you something to eat? Well, we'll see if we can get you something, and then it's your choice if you want to eat it, okay? They need to assess whether or not Eastwood Ritchie is a suicide risk and if she may have any undiagnosed mental illness that could have contributed to the death of her baby. Okay, you may give us a little bit of time to, to find someone uh, that we know is going to be able to ensure your safety, okay? Okay. Um, the last thing we, we, we feel like we, we need to talk about with you is the fact that obviously you know now we had a, a search warrant for your DNA, all right, and we have your DNA, and that is not only going to be compared into the, the, the child, but also into the database. And there are many, unfortunately, other cases out there, and your, your DNA is going to be in the system that's going to be compared to all those cases. And now is the time, if there is anything else, that you need to get it out there. You've come, you know, uh, clean with this, what's happened here. You've told us what happened, what's happened. Um, if there is anything else that your DNA is going to link you to, um, because unfortunately there are other baby cases that happened and those are still open. And then there's other homicide cases here in Jolly County and in Ashville County and Lake County. And now that we have your DNA, it's going to be compared to all those cases. It's going to be in that system. So if there is any other issues out there that we need to talk about, now is the time to do it. Because I'm not getting warm and fuzzy that this isn't the only time. That there may be some more times. And it's going to be compared to all those other cases, Gail. And the last thing you want to do is say that you came in here and be honest with us because, you know, part of what happens is, you know, truth and sentencing and showing genuine remorse and coming clean. And if there are other issues, now is the time that we need to talk about. And I truly believe that you know that there is other issues. And we're here to listen. We're not here to judge you. We're not yelling and screaming. But you know and I know this isn't the only time. That there's more times that this has happened. And now is the time that you need to tell us about this, Gail. You know? How many other times has this happened? One other time. One other time? And when was that? Mm. Was it before or after this child? Before. Before. Is that what Mark was talking about in 1991? Because he, he had told our investigators in 1991 that there was another pregnancy that he was aware of. I didn't tell him okay. I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, he may have known. Eastwood Ritchie is still unwilling to admit she told Mark about either of the pregnancies, but he clearly knew more than what she has told the detectives. When was his previous pregnancy? Probably about that time. About the 90, 1991 time? How, how old were you at the time? Would you remember that? Would that be easier to remember? Um, 20. 21. Okay. What, 20. Explain that situation to us. Tell us what happened. Is it Mark's child as well? It is. Okay. And tell us what happened on that, on that situation. Um... Pretty much the same situation, other than um, I had the baby. Um, at his rental house. And where is his and rental house? It was Euclid. Euclid is that in Harwich? No. What what street was that? No, it, um, it's where he was living. In, um, 248th Street. Okay. He rented from his brother. Mm -hmm. um, 
gave birth to it in the toilet. Is it a boy or a girl? I, I don't know. You don't know. And I never... You didn't want to know? I never looked. Okay. I, I don't know. What, what happened after you gave birth to the child? I did the same thing. Put it in a garbage bag. What did you do with the garbage bag? I left it. What do you mean you left it? What does that mean, girl? I took it and left it. Over by medical buildings in Euclid. Where where did you leave it exactly? There, um, there's a road called Brush Road. Um, it goes up behind um, very tall medical buildings that are there. Um, and I just left it over in the tall grass. Kind of like a field area you left in the tall grass? Yeah. What time of year was this? Um, summer. I think it was summer. Summer and you think you're 21? What, do you remember what year it would have been? After so much time, the chances of recovering the body of the first baby are slim. Even so, the search will have to be made. Um, either 90 or 91. I don't, don't recall which, what year it was. Okay, but it would have been summer 1991? Yes. Yeah. How would Mark have known? that you would have been pregnant around them. That's that's what he's advised our other investigators, that you were pregnant around them, that you would have had a miscarriage. Do you tell them that? I didn't have a miscarriage. I understand that, but oh. would you have told that to Mark? If he maybe he, he figured out that you were pregnant at that time and you told him you had a miscarriage? Because no. he seems to think that around that time you were pregnant and you told him you had a miscarriage. I, I don't recall telling him that. Okay. What color trash bag did you put the baby in? Oh. I'm not sure what he had at the time. Do you remember tying the bag? I probably did. I mean, do you remember though? I um, Most likely. Very not sure. And if you're not sure, no. don't say you're not sure. Right. Probably tied it in the Was the baby moving in the bag? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. You do, do you not remember or do you just kind of block that out of your memory? I may have. I, I really don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. No. And can you describe this building to us? Now you said Mark lived on 248. Yes. And it was Brush Road. And I'm not familiar that familiar I'm, with Euclid. I'm, so was you was Brush Road <laughs> close to 248 where his house was? Yes, it wasn't. It was up the road about half a mile. So would you have gone south or north on 248? Do you know, like towards the lake or away from the lake? Away. Away from the lake. So it was off of Euclid Avenue. Right. So then you had to go 248 to Euclid. Mm -hmm. And which way would you go on Euclid? Um, uh, east. East. And then you would come and to then Brush? You, turn, you have to turn on to Richmond Road. Okay. Which way would you turn on to Richmond? Right. Right. And then Brush is... Off. Off of Richmond? Off of Richmond. And you're describing turning left onto Brush? Yeah. And then which side was the office building on? 
For the left. For the left. Mm-hmm. Do you think if we took you there, you'd be able to show us the area? Yeah. Do you remember if that baby was ever found? Did I, you I don't know. I, don't I, know. I never heard. You never heard? No. And this building was under the left. What color was it? I think they're either white or brown. White or brown. two large medical buildings side by side. Can, if we give you a piece of paper, can you kind of draw the area? Mm-hmm. Or, or you left the baby? Mm-hmm. Right, let me get a piece of paper real quick. Yeah. Yeah, when you come back, I'm going to grab an overview. Daniel, is that, is that the only other time? There's only two times. Are you being honest with me about that? Yeah. Eastwood Ritchie has nothing to gain by lying. She has already admitted to killing two of her babies, and she has to know that she is going to be serving jail time. Okay, because like, like Detective Seaman explained to you, your DNA will hit the database in a matter of days. And it's going to connect all those files, all those missing unidentified persons. So if you're not being honest with us, we're going to know. So now is your chance to be able to, to get on the front end of this. There's nothing else you need to tell us. No. Okay. Was that a recall? You've forgotten another incident? No, I don't think so. Can you kind of draw us how that like shows where like maybe where Richmond and Brush is? Okay. Thank you. Um, I need to write you a couple of issues. Make enough room for a two building. Oh, that's right. One. Is it by that first building? I think so. So the baby was here. Yeah, somewhere in that. So this is this is part of Brush Road, or is this like a driveway for the building? Oh, this is this is Brush, and that's the driveway. All right, so that's a driveway right there, and the building's here, and the other building is like right here. Yeah. All right. Was there anything over in this field at all? No, just really tall grass. Um, there were houses here. There were houses kind of behind here? Mm-hmm. Was there anything else distinguishable about the area? No, no it's, it's what it is. So, and you birthed that child as a full-term baby? I believe so. Uh, but it looked full-term? Okay. I think I even looked at it. Well, you had to, I mean, you grabbed it, you moved it, you had to have seen it. Whether or not you're blocking that out of your memory, because you don't want to see it, but you did see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was, you believe it was a full-term baby? I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. um, You went into a normal labor, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1991. And how do you know the difference between that child and the child that we found? I mean, what what is so distinguishable? Was it because of the location? That's what remembered or reminded you of, you know, the child that you birthed on 248th and the child that you birthed at the home in Shaker Heights? Um. Mm-hmm. 
but it's very similar in nature how it happened, right? Yeah. Both incidents follow the same pattern. After getting away with it the first time, Eastwood Ritchie doubtlessly felt competent in the same method working again, never realizing that advances in DNA would lead back to her. Um, anything else that, that you think that we should know about about that case or that child? Do you know you don't know if it's a boy or girl? I don't. You know. I did not. Did you ever think about any names for these children? No. No. You didn't want to. Because you didn't want. Yeah, no. Okay, so that's two. So, again, your DNA is not going to be, I mean, it's going to tell us. So, I understand. Um, and it's going to link you to that one in the link mark, uh, much as it did in our case. Um, and what other ones are there? There are no others. There are no others. You're positive with that? Yeah. Okay. Any other issues that think you think are going to come up when your DNA hits the system here in the next few days? Any other crimes or criminal acts? Or, no. No. It goes into a big database just like fingerprints, you know, so it's called CODIS. Um, and that's where your DNA will go and uh, um, it will, uh, you know, be checked against any other, you know, Crime victims, crime, you know, evidence that was collected, no, suspect stuff. Nothing any, to any, anyone else. Uh, no. Just these two children. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Hang on one second. Let me see what he's doing on the, air, on the aerials, and we're going to figure out how to get you over there and get you checked out. So, are these the medical buildings? Yeah, if you would have, I mean, you can see where brush breaks off of Richmond, and then these are orthopedic and pediatric buildings. And um, those are the buildings, so, okay, let me show that. And I understand this may have looked different, you know, in 1990, 91. You said as you came up rush from Richmond, the building on the left, correct? Yes. Okay, so that would I be guess the... this is the drive that I'm okay. um, trying to get this. So when so... You, you went to the right side of the drive as you would be entering off the right-hand sides, were you? Mm -hmm. So like in this area here is where... Okay. Can you just initial by that dot for me? Okay, I'll be right back, okay? Yeah. A bunch of people who like to eat it, uh, you obviously don't have to. But uh, there's some, some food for you. Thank you. Sorry, it's been a while. We're going to take you over to the hospital and have you talk to a mental health official, care or professional. Is there anywhere else you can think of that you that you would be safe from? Is there anywhere you think you would be safe? There's plenty of places, but I don't want. Well, we're going to take you over there and have them check you out, make sure you're okay, and uh, uh, you're, you're willing to go talk to mental health, right? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you grab your stuff? We'll take you over. Okay? Appreciate your patience. You want to take that lunch with me or anything? Yeah, thank okay. you. The hospital Since there was forensic proof that the baby had drawn breath, Eastwood Ritchie was charged with murder. 
during Eastwood Ritchie's trial, no reference to the first baby was made so as to not influence the jury. She was convicted of the murder and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 15 years. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content and want to support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description below. You'll be able to watch videos with zero ads and some that are too controversial for YouTube, and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Thanks again for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next video.